What's up, ladies? What's up, Sacred Sisters? Welcome back to the Sacred Sister Circle podcast. Mm -hmm. This is episode number five, and I am so excited because we have my good sis, Keisha Bowers here, who I just adore. And with this being episode number five, five being the number of change and transformation, it seems like the perfect alignment as Keisha's work, right? Or her tagline is movements for change. And so we're going to be tapping into all of that today. I welcome you all back to the Sacred Sister Circle podcast, a sacred space for sacred sisters to have sacred conversation about their sacred work. Today, like I said, we got Keisha Bowers here, inner child healer, Reiki practitioner, right, too. Yes, yes. I've been seeing you on the beach doing your sacred work, Mm -hmm. and I am just amazed at how we met and how it was just like an instant sisterhood, an instant connection. So shout out to Niyoshi, because Niyoshi brings people together. She She clearly has a gift for that, okay? She's like a talent scout. She's like a talent scout, right? Yeah, right, right. She can just see the light and she brings people together. So I'm going to have to talk to her and say, girl, you got a gift for bringing people together. Mm -hmm. Because everybody that I have met through her, the connection has just been beautiful, Mm -hmm. sacred, divine, and easy. So shout out to her. But Keisha, tell the Sacred Sister Circle family who you are and what you do. Okay, let's just start there. Sis, listen, first I want to thank you for having me share space. It always feels like we have like a, um, you know, when we're girls, we like sleepovers. Mm-hmm. That doesn't change when we become adults. Facts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that sleepover energy, you know, we get to Facts. talk about everything juicy. And- yes. So thank you. Oh, um, it's all love. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. So a little bit about my work. Mm-hmm. Just about you. Um, okay, so I am a first, I am a mother. Okay. Um, that's like probably one of my most important roles in my life right now. Mm. Um, I homeschool my children. Mm. So that shifted my reality and in how I my like how I see myself because I never mm. thought that I could be a homeschool parent. Wow. I didn't think I had what it took. And mm. now it's a really big important part of my life. Right. So I'm a homeschool mama. I am an inner child healing guide. I am an MSW. I have a master's degree in social work, but I am not what I do. Mm -hmm. So I will say that I'm a growing, evolving being who I've worked on my healing, my personal healing, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And in turn, created a platform that helps me authentically help other women Mm. face their own. Because what I learned is that what I'm experiencing, someone else is experiencing it too. Right. So we're, true. No, we're no different. Right? So true. Yeah. Listen, this is a whole side note. And I swear I'm going to come back to being focused. But has anybody ever told you that you kind of look like Iyanla Van Zandt? I get that a lot. I get Iyanla, especially as I've matured, I get Iyanla. And um, there's a sister who's a singer. I, I can't remember her name. I'm going to, it's going to come to me. And someone told me I look like her and I went and I was like, oh, she's gorgeous. Wow. And, <laughs> and I was like, I, yeah, I've been told that I look like, but Iyanla I've gotten. And then when I shaved the side of my head, uh-huh. everyone was like, you just have this Iyanla energy. That's a beautiful energy. You know, yeah. um, Today I Cry by Iyanla and some other books by her was kind of my introduction even into spirituality and mm-hmm. that healing work. So Iyanla holds a very near and dear space in my heart. But as I'm just sitting here looking at you, I'm getting all of, the, uh, all of these Iyanla Van Zant vibes. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's power. Mm-hmm. Because sister don't play, okay? Sister no, don't she, play. She, gets, <laughs> she gets you right. She gets you right. right. She gets you right. So, And that's what I've been told, like, an, a session with me is mm-hmm. like, you know, mm-hmm. like, I, I help to get folks right, 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 right. <laughs> get them in order. Get them in order. Yes, because that's definitely some words that Ian Levan Zant. She says, you out of order. You're out of order. <laughs> I love when she says that. <laughs> she says you're out of order. She does. You're out of order. It, it, yes. it is so true. So, yes. which this leads to a beautiful question. What was happening in your life mm. when you realized, okay, I'm out of order. I'm disconnected <sighs> from that wounded child. 
And it's like, okay, you recognize the chaos. You recognize that things are in flow. Like, what was that like for you? What was that experience like? And how did you bring yourself back into order? Mm. Well, it was not pretty. Mm. I was a mess. And I have days where I think I still can be a, a beautiful mess. Yeah, yeah. But this mess that I was in was like, I thought I needed to go into a mental institution kind of mess. Mm. So I had hit what I call rock bottom. Mm -hmm. So you can only go, 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 go for so long in any situation that's not good for you, whether it's your finances, whether it's your sex life, whether it's how you eat. Mm. You know, we have you ever met someone who's just overeaten to the point where now they have a heart disease or, you know, we can only do so much for so long right. until we hit a wall. Yes. And what had happened in my life is that I had hit the wall. Now, we live in a society that says if you have these external standards that you can mask your pain and kind mm. of glide through. Mm. So because I had an MSW and I'm married and I live in a good gated community and, you know, I'm a professional dancer and I'm on the stage all the time. Nobody knew that I was suffering. Wow. Mm. Nobody knew that I was suffering. And when I mean I hit a wall my codependency, my addiction to fixing others, my repressed anger, mm. um, my denial that I had an abusive mother, all of mm. that I wasn't willing to face. Yeah. And unfortunately, it shows up in other ways in our yeah. relationships and how we build. You know, I had wonderful female friendships that I caused harm to. I had, mm. I just didn't know. I didn't know that I was a, a train wreck. I didn't know that I was mm. gossiping that I, because... I, you know, I had real passive, cute ways to gossip. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize that it was an addiction. I didn't realize that I didn't love myself, that I was walking in this darkness. I just didn't know. And yeah. until I had hit a rock bottom, what did that rock bottom look like? Let's talk about it. My father died. Ah. Mm. My father died. And ironically, mm. I actually have a photo of him here. Hey, you know, welcome to the party. There goes daddy. Yes, we welcome his beautiful energy into this space. Wow. Yeah. So what he had done for me was he held me up. Mm. He, it, it was this codependent relationship where mm. I was broken and daddy was there to lift me up. You know, I, oh. I, I he never held me accountable. Every time I complained about something, it was someone else's fault. How mm. dare they do that to my daughter? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was mm. that kind of thing. There was some enabling. There was some emotional mm. enabling. And I, I, I enabled him too. Mm. You know, he needed financial help. I made sure I got that credit card. My dad and I, we were enmeshed and we enabled each other. Mm. And yeah. he, he left. Ah. And mm. I had to see myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I was mm. in the serious darkness. Mm. I did not know. That wow. I was wow. Wow. Yeah. And sometimes it takes that level of hurt, pain, because when we lose someone, we lose an aspect of ourselves. And it sounds like for you, he was that savior. You know, My he was, like, was the savior mm, mm. for everyone. He had a savior complex. He's a Leo. He's a pan Africanist. Okay. You know, oh, yeah. Black Panther, you know, mm. like he, my dad had a savior complex and he definitely showed up in that way. A very spiritual person, always had the right answer, yeah. you know, and I just didn't have to lean into myself as long as he was around. Wow. And so how have you now been able to really shift that energy mm. and own your own strength, own your own safety, own your own, like be able to be your own pillar and hold yourself up? What does that look like now? First, I, I had to channel him. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You better talk. You better teach. I had to channel him from a spiritual place. So mm. now understanding that I didn't have control that this control that I was holding on to having mm, was wow. because I didn't feel safe and that I was time for me to be free. That was mm. number one for my mm. healing. Mm. I had to learn. So I, you know, I developed a spiritual community and my godmother, kudos to her. I will forever mm. say her name. Mm. She taught me how to connect with my, with spirit. 
And um, I learned to build a spiritual practice. Yes, yes. But in that level of self-discovery, naturally, I started to lose some of the things that I thought would always be in my life, like my mother. Mm, you know, I thought okay. that because I was in denial about that abusive relationship. Mm. And then my father was always there to help, you know, smoothen it out and, mm -hmm. and make it feel right. Mm -hmm. When he left and that abuse showed up and then I was taking care of myself, what did you think I did? did? What You know, mm -hmm. like if she was nasty, if she was abusive, if she wasn't respecting me, now that I was showing up for myself, how, you know, the response was no longer, well, let me take a step back and give her a minute. And now the response was like, hold on now. This doesn't mm. feel good. So I started to set some boundaries. Yes, yes. Oh, my life shifted completely. Mm. I had to become financially independent. Mm. I had to see my own beauty. Yeah. I had to be okay with my errors, my imperfections. Mm. I had to learn that showing up authentically meant that I was going to attract the experiences and the people that were in alignment because mm. I was attracting experiences and people because everyone met my mask. Yes, yes. So then what, do you, what do you think you bring in? Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Wow. You are saying so much good stuff, girl. I'm like, okay, we got this, we got this, we got this. There's so much that needs to be discussed because there's so much power. Like something that you just said right now that was so captivating and just beautiful to think about when it comes down to, you know, someone that we love dearly becoming an ancestor is the power that we now get to channel them, activate them mm -hmm. and turn on, you know, some of those qualities and characteristics that they embodied. And that feels like healing. That feels yeah, like power. Wow. Just thinking wow. about it. Because my yeah. father was a public speaker mm -hmm. and y'all are not going to believe this, but before his passing, I did not do this. I wasn't this person. Wow. This was, this was born out of his passing because it, my brother, um, he cracked a joke one day. He was like, my dad's name is Aya, A-Y-A, mm. Aya. Mm. And um, my name is Keisha. So my brother mm. was like, you know, ever since your dad passed, we have different fathers. And he said, ever mm. since your dad passed, you're like becoming him. And he goes, mm -hmm. I'm going to call you Keishaya. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was this vocal, always, you know, he never spoke unless he added value. He always taught me that. Never open your wow. mouth unless what you have to say changes the room, you know? Mm. And he never spoke unless what he had to say added value to the space. Yeah. And but he was vocal. He was a speaker. He was always and I stood up and I remember when he had just passed away. Maybe like two weeks after. It's so crazy that I remember this because he passed in 2014. That's when I, I call it, I, I was in my darkness and I walked into my light, 2014. He, he passed December 5th, 2014. And like December 28th, I had this, vi this dream, a vision that he took me to Radio Shack. Radio Shack ain't even open no more. Mm. I don't know if y'all are old enough to know what Radio Shack is. But so was, I still know what Radio Shack is. In this dream, he, we went to Radio Shack. He bought these big, you know, those street speakers, like if you're going to have mm -hmm. a street party, mm -hmm. he picked them up with his bare hands. They were mm -hmm. massive. And he said to me, I'm going to give you a mic. Mm. And I want you to speak to the people. Wow. And he said, and you're going to need these speakers. Mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. never forget that dream as long as I live. Wow. And I want to wow. cry just telling it. Yeah, yeah, and because that's, that's prophetic. That's a that's one of those prophetic dreams. You know what I mean? My dad told me I'm going to give you a mic. We're going to have a party, and I want you to speak to the people. Oh my god! Wow. And yep. so you right now, something that is so beautiful for a lot of women to understand is that you right now are walking and living in your father's dream and his desire for you and his love for you. Yeah. And you are fulfilling a prophecy. I am. I am. And I, I always say, because, you know, I'm one of the, his children. He had a lot. He had six of us, but he really poured into me. And mm. I always tell people he knew this part of me before I knew it. Mm. He, he was preparing me for this part of my life. Wow. So he was a prophet, you know, mm. he was yeah. a seer. He had vision, you know. So like I host tours to Africa. My father was mm. a Pan-Africanist. He had mm. never been to Africa in his life. He spent his whole life telling people about Africa and 
all of this great history. He was a historian. He never made it. Here I am hosting tours, bringing, I brought at least 70 people to Africa already. And I'm going too. I'm going. You're going to be taking me and my family. Okay. And it's just like, where, where did this come from? Wow. That's that activation. That's activation. And I a say, lot of activation have, button. I always say you got to press that activation. You got to press that activation button. You got to turn on. You got to come online. Come you on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now you are really in. Oh my God. So now every time you go, he traveling with you. He walking with you. He like, let's do this. He's living out his dream through I you. Can't, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it, sis. I to this day, I still. It still behooves me. Wow. Still. The magic of it all. Every time I step on a stage, you've seen me. I'm like a person. I'm out mm -hmm. here. I do public speaking. I, 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 I'm, I shed a tear before I get, I say, I cannot believe this. Wow. I have chills because I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. It's like, even when we come together and have these calls and conversations, I'm always in awe of it you know and so it just reminds me that we should never take our life for granted because there's magic happening literally in every moment and if you're willing to tune in you'll be able to, to see and discover what that magic is yes. i am in awe you and created this you know yeah. you should have thought about it and then you brought yeah. it to life yeah it's such a gift. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I say to your father, power to your father. I love him uh, uh, because I, I just feel, yes, 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 yes. Say his name. That's Aya. I think, I think even you sharing your story right now is going to give people who may have recently lost somebody or people who have grieved or still grieving from losing somebody from years and years and years ago. But that they get to reflect on their lives and see how that loved one is activating them and opening things up in their lives. And then yes. something also so beautiful is that you said this happened in 2014 where you walked into your light. Well, 2014 was a seven year and 2023 is a seven year. And so I was born 11 7 77. Okay. I was born 11, 7, 77. My dad, my number is seven. And my dad, and I never counted those numbers. I didn't even know that they, it was a number seven year. I never even thought about that. You just brought something to me. Right. And my father always, you know, I was the little girl who, you know, when everybody used to go to buy their lottery ticket, they would make me rub their tickets. Uh -huh, everybody, uh -huh. The adults with the grown folks would let me, like I'd be eight years old. And they would be like, touch my ticket, Keisha. Touch yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I grew up in my father's family in this knowingness that there was something about me. Mm. Not that special because we're all special. Not, right. I'm not talking about narcissistic awareness. Mm. I'm talking about owning your power. Yes. And I knew there was something different about me. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I, it, yeah. That's so real. No, that's funny because I was born on 10 7. So we still have that, oh that gosh. type of, yeah, that type I of. Have a 10, I have a 10 7 person in my life that I need you to meet. Like mm. off the charts, when we're done, I'm going to tell you about Amija the prophet. He was born 10 7. Wow. I love that. Powerful man. I, hey, hey, let's connect. Let's connect because that's also so what that's we're meant to do. Yes. That's also what I we're meant to do. You. Come together. Yep. That's yep. so beautiful. So you said, uh, you know, you decided to own your power, right? Mm -hmm. um, you also brought up your mother. And I definitely want to talk about that yeah. because, you know, for me, what I love is that when we start to heal, our relationships can heal, our perspectives can heal. Um, I grew up with a Leo mother who is strong. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. She is a go-getter, right? And she was a single mom too. So, you know, you know, she was, she had to work hard, you know, she had to work hard and her working hard and not being able to hold that emotional space for me, that wounded me as a child because I was a very sensitive child, right? Like, yeah. a lot, like you said, owning your power, 
I didn't realize that my sensitivity and being able to feel things and being able to read minds and stuff like that, I didn't recognize it was a power at that time because I was always told things like, what you crying for? Stop crying. Go to that. I'm going to yep. give you something to cry about. I was always told things like that. Like I couldn't be sensitive. I couldn't feel in that way. Fortunately, though, now I had a major healing moment, Keisha. This happened. Uh, I was pregnant. I believe I was pregnant with Kim. I was pregnant with Kim. So this happened in like 2021. I'm feeling emotional. I'm feeling overwhelmed. And I feel this need to call my mom. And my ego, Keisha, was fighting it. My, my ego was like, your mama don't understand your emotions. Why would you call her? Every time you used to call her in the past, she would just, you know, sh- blow you it's off or me. ask you why you're crying. But I was doing so much healing work and teaching other women that you get to retell the story, right? Yes. We don't have to keep living out that same storyline. If you want a new reality, create a new reality. Yeah. So I'm in the car and I'm feeling emotional and I'm like, you know what? I'm a caller. And I called her and right when she answered the phone, I just started to cry. And this was the first time that my mom, and I don't even want to say it's the first time, but it's, it was the first time that I consciously felt her holding space for me. Mm. So, whether that's the truth or not, right. it right. was the first time that I was able to perceive her as holding space for me. And we talked and she comforted me and she nourished me and she gave me what I needed. So mm-hmm. in that moment, I was able to really heal and let go of the story that my mother didn't understand my sensitivity, that my mother didn't you know, uh, allow me to be myself and care for me or that she was controlling and all of those things, I was able to let that go. And ever since then, Keisha, my mom has been able to hold a different space. Mm. For me. But I think it, I think it has to do with a lot of her healing too, because she has been growing and evolving and her eyes have been opening. Open. Tell me. I love those stories. You know, like I love to hear that. And I've worked with so many women um, in the work that we've done where they've been able to have those experiences, not because they created it for their mother, because we can't heal our mothers. Yes. That's Mm -hmm. their responsibility, you know. Mm -hmm. And where I was in my darkness was my ego made me believe that I had what it took to fix my mother Ah. and to make her better. Mm -hmm. And my ego did not see that the fact that I had a father who loved me, that my father's family and I were so close, that I had a higher education. I didn't have the wherewithal to think that that affected my mother. Mm. Because I was in my ego mind. Mm. Mm. I I didn't take into account her pain, her trauma, that she didn't have a father. She didn't feel loved. Here I come People calling me the lucky girl. I have a father who's loving. I, oh, yeah. I grew up with my father's family. I have this higher education. I got a ma- my mother never finished school. Mm. I never took that into account. Yes. I never. And what was happening in my life was the types of feminine relationships that I nurtured were with women who I needed it to look like my mother and the relationship I had with my mother. So what did you think? I attracted women who were jealous. Mm. I attracted women who was in silent competition. Yeah. I, I needed because it was familiar. Yes. Yes. Right? That, that was all I knew. Yes. And then I would come out of it thinking, well, what did I do wrong? Well, yes, you, you're, you're connecting yourself with people who are not in alignment. Mm. And they're in alignment with your old self, yeah, with that wounded self. Well, when I was wounded, at least, yeah. you know, that's what I'm yeah. saying. So then um, I, I evolved into, because, you know, you can't accept someone when you're in pain. Mm. So when I was in a place of, well, what about me? And she couldn't mm. mother me and she never loved mm. me. I couldn't, I couldn't see her. I couldn't, I couldn't even hold space for her. So wow. my first step was to take care of me mm-hmm. and to really, really build a relationship with myself mm-hmm. where I didn't need anyone else to validate me. Yes. Yep. And when I was able to do that, I can move into this place where I can see that my mother is, she needs help. Mm-hmm. She needs love. She mm-hmm. needs care. She mm-hmm. needed it. She didn't get it. Mm-hmm. But I also understood because I made, before you go full no contact as an adult child, and I'm speaking for all of us, those of you who are watching, I promise you, we make at least a thousand attempts. 
Mm. And honey, I have made maybe 5,000 attempts and wow. it is okay. I am well. My mother is not where your mother is. Mm. My mother does not have the ability and the wherewithal because she's in mm. deep denial about mm. how her pain has shown up in her life and wow. what she's created for others and the pain she's caused. She does not know. No. And mm. I do not welcome that in my life. Hey, 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 you have to protect you know, your peace. Yes. I deserve to be loved and to be treated like the goddess mm -hmm. that I am by all who enter my life. Mm -hmm. And I deserve to reciprocate that. Yeah, absolutely. And so I had to let go. Mm -hmm. And and I and I'm not gonna see her at Gucci and brand new like that letting go happened long ago. And I last September was my last mm -hmm. attempt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, last wow. September, yes. Yeah. Wow. And I so was able to go you... through that and still be like at peace. Like, okay, this is this is regular. This is who she is. It's all yeah. It's all yeah. So as a healer, that as a healer that you are, being able to see and reflect those things, what do you think your mother would need in order to be able to surrender that that shield, that hurt, that trauma? that has blocked her from being able to express love in a healthy way. So two things. I consider myself a guide and not a healer. Okay. Yes. I don't, that's a huge responsibility. Mm. I don't want that. I, and the second thing is it's none of my business. I don't know what she needs. Mm. And that's between her and her divine source. Mm. And I trust that that source will take care of her. Wow. I set myself free. It mm. ain't none of my, I don't know what she needs. I know what I needed. Mm. I know what I still need too. Mm. I don't know what That's she powerful. needs. I don't have what it takes to know. And I'm okay with that unknowingness. Mm. <laughs> and the reason why I asked that question is because I observed my mother's transformation. I observed mm. her become refined and transformed. Mm. And it happened through love. It happened through her deciding to focus on herself and manifesting a healthy partnership. Yeah. And that didn't happen until we were, my brothers and I, we were full-blown adults. We were all in college. And my mother manifested a partner who was mm. self-aware and conscious. And he reflected to her and he would be so honest with her, but in such a gentle and loving way yeah. that it helped her to really kind of, because I'm telling you, my mama used to be like, Desiree, do this. I need to do, I mean, she used to be on my back, even as an adult. I wish that that's what it, how it showed up. You know, when you're dealing with a master manipulator mm. who is a sociopath, mm. it's deep. Yeah. It's more than that they antagonize or they try to, it's deep. Mm. Um, I have, my mom has six children. I'm the only girl. Wow. I'm, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to, I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. Okay. But to, we all have different fathers mm. and it's very broken. Mm. it's not you know what I mean I wish that I can tell you what my inner child desired for mm. her like mm. but I'm very aware that what my inner child desired and what's happening in reality is not the same but yeah. when I go into my inner child into what she wanted she wanted a mother who was self-aware mm -hmm. who knew how to give love who knew how to celebrate without breaking you down I'm mm. talking about how getting a master's degree and my graduation party. She's like cussing me off and telling me when nobody can see, like you made me come to this party and I wanted to go on a cruise. Mm. Yeah. I'm talking about like every wow. birthday, giving you a reason to cry. I'm talking mm. about like, wow. I'm talking about hardcore, like I'm talking about hardcore emotional yeah. abuse. Yeah. You know, um, that has to come from someone who's in a lot of pain. A lot of pain. And, and a can't, lot of pain. You can't see it. No, she can't. And because she's mm -hmm. really good at creating uh, an image through, mm -hmm. you know, external, like she looks good. She dresses good. She travels. She has money. She's, you know, like no one would ever, it, they, they would have to experience it. And even after you experience it, it still feels like, I'm sure this is not what it is. That didn't happen. That no, didn't it wasn't happen. that. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so imagine, and imagine having a family culture that actually nurtures that. So like, I didn't just lose my mother. I lost my mother and her entire family. Mm -hmm. Like I had to mm -hmm. let go of ev all of them. Wow. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I decided that if you couldn't listen to me and support me, that you couldn't be a part of my life. 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. How, they can't support her and support me at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had to let go completely. Wow. And I'm glad you said that because um, that's not something that I've heard a lot of, of people literally saying, you know what, I'm done. But the place that you're doing it from or what I feel from you is that even though it's challenging, there's still a layer of peace within that. Oh my God. I I didn't know that it was peaceful until I kid y'all not like a year ago. Mm. Up until a year ago, I still wanted to be integrated with them. And I still thought that this was bad. Yeah. But then I started to go through some intimate things in my personal life that caused me to have to go within. And I realized that everything that I need is inside of me. Mm. There's no one on the outside that can give that to me. Mm. No mother, no children, no family, no friends, no right. one. Spirit. Yeah. 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 And, and that created a shift for me that made me move from angry to into acceptance. Yeah. It made me realize that I love them. I love my mother. I love my family. It's okay. But at this stage of my life, they're not a part of my life. And that's okay. Mm. Mm. So how would you guide someone in separating from unhealthy relationships where a person has no desire to reflect, to heal, to go to therapy, to do what they need to do? How do you guide someone in being able to walk away and not fester in that anger? Because that anger, that bitterness of that resentment, it manifests inside the body or inside of other relationships. You may be angry, upset, and resentful with your mother. And because you're holding on to that, stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. Tell us about my body or in your, you know, and honestly, I was going through that. I developed a condition which came from having a C-section called Mm -hmm. adenomyosis, Mm -hmm. where the uterus, you know, is painful, You Mm -hmm. heavy bloating, you know, it's, it's pain. And even though they have medical ways of saying, you know, it came from the C-section and then the blood was attached. I know in my core that that was pain body that was attached in my womb. Like, Mm -hmm. and so how would I tell someone to deal with this? First of all, there are many layers, Mm -hmm. but first and foremost, you have to get out of denial. Mm -hmm. So you have to list, I'm really big about list making, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to list all the ways that you've lied to yourself. Wow. First and foremost. Wow. You that's got, huge. You got, that's a big, that's the biggest step. Mm. You got to list all the ways that you've lied to yourself, all the ways that you've tried to protect yourself from shame and mm. guilt. Right. Mm. So for many years, I felt a lot of shame. I felt like I was a bad daughter or like I, I was, I got, I was getting like a punishment mm. because my family culture that I grew up in, there was a lot of religiosity so mm-hmm. there was this language of like, you're going to be punished for not doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. Or oh, not, yeah. You know, you're not loving your mother. And so what? That's your only mother. And so honor I, thy mother and thy father. So I lived with yeah. a lot of immense guilt for a very, very long time. Mm. Of course, I had an issue in my womb that that cow one. They correlate. Right. So when I was able to get out of that denial and really face some of those core beliefs that were guiding how I felt. I was able to eject them. Right, right. You know what I mean? I was able to set myself free and say, yeah. hold on now, mm-hmm. you're you're taking care of yourself. You're not so you okay. So get stepping out of denial is mm-hmm. first and foremost. Mm-hmm. So these steps are more about thought processes than really things to do. Right, right, right. The next thing yeah. is you gotta see yourself as the most important piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. You're that piece that the puzzle won't be complete if you're not there. Yeah, yeah. You got to see yourself as important. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. valuable. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no you, then you ain't got no life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So you got to return to this. I call it the center of yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to go back in. Mm -hmm. Right? You got to go back in. And then the third step for me was building community. Mm, yeah, like I, I had to find people. I had to find my people. Yeah, and I'm thankful. I'm a part of a spiritual community. Um, I practice Ifa. I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a devotee in mm-hmm. Ifa, and and so my spiritual practice has brought a lot of solutions in my life. Yes, I'm never alone. Mm-hmm. I got a whole gang. 
Mm. Seen and unseen. Yeah. That helped me to yeah. resolve. And yeah. because of my trauma, I didn't know how to show up in that space. My godmother used to be like, I don't know what's going on. It's been a few months. You're not calling. Like, I wanted to fix things by myself because yeah. my trauma response was to figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. Because I came from a family culture that you were ridiculed and criticized if you needed help. You yeah. were looked as like the bad one. Like, what's your problem? Get it together. We always mm -hmm. got to give you money. We always got it. Like, so I, I, I would get into my spiritual practice, need some guidance in something and not ask, go try right. to figure out on my own. Things right. were falling apart. My God would be like, I told you to call me. Yeah. 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 So I went through some ugly spots, you know, and I'm still ironing out my kinks. Mm -hmm. I, we're, we're a work in progress always yeah always you yeah. know what i mean but i learned to communicate i learned to say listen i have a trauma response to be hyper independent so if mm. you don't hear from me you might need to give me a call yeah yeah help us us out <laughs> help us, help us out <laughs> and if you yeah. don't feel safe around someone you can't build those communication skills mm. so you got to check in with yourself if you don't feel safe you got to check these people you got in your life right Wow, that is so good. That's so good. I, I almost I almost need us to talk about that even deeper because that is something that I deal with as well to where I don't necessarily ask for a lot of help. I try to figure mm -hmm. things out on my own. I will be- well, You said something key, sis, right? You, you're, you said your mom was strong. Yes. Once I hear a black woman say that, I know that they're hyper independent. Yeah. Because that was projected onto you. Hmm. That, I mean, my mom, my mom, Keisha, she still kind of talks about this to this day. It's a very, it's a, it's an identity thing where she's like, oh, whenever I needed something, I call Desiree and I tell Desiree to do it. I, and I'm just like you, all I have is brothers. I have four brothers. <gasps> oh my God. So we wanted the same with that with only having brothers, but she's like, whenever I needed anything done at the house, if I, whatever I needed, I'm calling Desiree to do it and she going to make sure that it gets done. And how does that and, feel for you? That you, you know what? It was a lot. It was a lot because um, a way that this showed up, which blew my mind was, for example, my mother, um, she had dyslexia when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. And of course, at that time in the seventies or so, she didn't get the resources that she need for her to be, you know, for her to feel competent in school. And so we're born, she has her kids, my brothers, and I have a younger brother who also kind of struggled in school. And because my mother didn't feel competent in that way, like educationally, it was, yeah. Desiree, I need you to help your brother with this. I so need you to make sure your brother. Too. Same story. I have my, two, I have two younger brothers. I taught my baby brother how to read. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very sad if we, if I'm going to be transparent, that brother does not talk to me. He's not a part of my life. And I mm -hmm. taught him how to read. I taught mm -hmm. him like, I went to his graduation. I was like, I was like the mother, mm -hmm. you know, for my two younger brothers. I, yeah. I, you know, I definitely, I can relate to that. Yeah, I definitely. I understand. And, and then that, so that, that showed up like being over responsible and hyper independent, over responsible and hyper independent. And then when you're not in that role, let's say you need to, so you want to just take some time out, you feel kind of, or I felt like I'm not yeah. doing enough. Mm -hmm, of course. Guilty because I'm not doing enough. I'm not being productive. I'm not like, I remember, and this showed up also when I first, you know, entered this entrepreneurial space, I was just like, you know, there were moments where I'm kind of relaxed and I'm kind of, I'm like, I'm not doing enough. Like I should be doing something. I should be doing more. I should be, you know, so it definitely, that hyper independence does have an effect. And I still go through that. How about yeah. that? Just if you're watching, I know you're seeing us, people will probably be, oh, they got it together. I still have days where I go through that. And then, yeah. you know, the big M word that we link to um, our productivity. You mm. don't know what the M word is. Mm. What's the M word? You The M word? M like man. Yep. Money. Thank you. So then we think if we're not, if we're, if we're taking action, but we're not, the currency is not flowing in Ooh, alignment God. with the action that we're really not enough. We this use a whole other lesson. <laughs> currency, 
to, yes. to attach to our worth. Yes. Yes. So right. true. So true. And I had to, and this came from a conversation with my husband dream where, cause I had gotten to a point to, I was really in that space. Like, okay, I'm doing all of this powerful work. You know, I have some clients, some consistent work, but I need more. I want to be able to do more and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it came down to a point to where my spirit was like, that's not what I need from you. Because when you're in that energy and that vibration, your power is not where it should be. Yeah. You know, it's not there. And so mm-hmm. I had to talk to him and say, babe, you know what? I'm go- I got to step back from trying to do so make much. money, mm-hmm. you know, trying to do it and just live in my gift and live in my power. Like I can't, it, it doesn't feel right. Like I feel more drained. I feel out of sync. I feel out of balance. And I'm mm-hmm. grateful that he was able to be like, don't worry about it. Like yeah. whenever you get the download, whenever you get the channel, whenever you get the inspiration, you move on that. You do what you need to do. That's I'll be beautiful. the brains. I'll be the brains with figuring out, okay, let's run this play. Let's run this play. Let's run this play. And when you tell me, okay, Sphere gave me a class that I need to teach mm-hmm. or a, 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 a product that I, whenever that happens, you just flow with it and do it. And that has been a major gift. And that's been healing for me, Keisha, because through that, I've been able to kind of start to heal that mother wound or that wound that I inherited or reflected or, um, you know, was bestowed upon me from my mother. Because what I've seen from my mother and my grandmother is that we got to do it all, even if it's to our detriment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even if it's to our detriment. I remember, Keisha, just uh, maybe like two Thanksgivings ago. My mother, she worked her job the night before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve or something like that. And then she came home and she just started cooking. It's cooking all night. Thanksgiving comes and I'm looking at her and she looks drained, exhausted. Mm. And she was like, yeah, baby, I'm tired. I've been cooking. I just told her, I said, why did you feel like you needed to do that? Why Mm. did you feel like you needed to go to work, come home from work, cook all night, then have everybody come to your house and you like, mama, you don't got to do that. Mm -hmm. I literally had to teach her that. And so, and so the next holiday or whatever came around, I said, mama, I'm about to show you how we about to do this. I said, you know what? I don't want you to do nothing. Y'all just come to my house. And guess what I did, Keisha? I told my brothers, I said, all y'all bring something to the house. We'll Mm -hmm. have something. That way, this is not stress on any one one person. person. Everybody contributes and we do it like that. But that's kind of a thing that a lot of women of color deal with. Taking on the whole plate, carrying the entire burden to their own detriment. And then that whole masculine, this whole thing about this masculine energy, which we were talking about on the clubhouse when you came in Mm -hmm. once, you know, where we like are walking into this hyper masculinity. And we don't know why, like, mm. why so angry? Why so reactive? Why so defensive? Why so, mm. well, you're overworked. You're overworked. You're overworked. You're overworked. You're overworked. Now, now, you're touching on something, and y'all know I'm about authenticity. I am not mm. going to show up in this space and act like, you mm. know, um, I I have a business, and my husband mm. works. He has a job. Mm. So it's different energetically in my in my marriage. Um, Mm. I, I'm creative. I'm the creative person. And, you know, like, so this is where I had to like learn communication skills. Mm. Like this is where, like, I'm telling you, the universe gives you what you need because Mm. I, when I start to feel like my back is against the wall and I, and I don't, and I, whether it's real or not, I've told myself I'm not supported. Mm. Then I want to go into my inner child response. Ah, mm. which is anger and you know so I had to learn to find ways to ask for what I needed to support mm. whatever I had going on yeah irrespective yeah. of what's going on that he goes to work or you know and so that has been a journey that's like a whole could, other hey <laughs> listen I could I already know because like even with me and my husband though we made that agreement right though we said okay Desiree Focus on your wellness, focus on the house, focus on letting your creativity flow. And then I'll focus on all the planning and structuring and the finances. 
though we made that agreement, there's still times where I find myself thinking and calculating and processing okay. and what can I do and what should mm -hmm. I do? Mm -hmm. So we still do that. And it's yes, like, we do. Yes, we do. and it's been months of me having to remind myself, okay, girl, allow, receive, speak up, mm -hmm. let's do so it's a constant reminder and constant mm -hmm. work to show up in the way that we need to. Absolutely. That's you how I, I went live a few days ago because a woman, um, there's a woman in my neighborhood who has two dogs and we always see them. I have a dog and her dog looks like one of mine, one of her dogs. And we always chit chat, but I never thought much of it. I just, I always spend time to talk to her and she's younger. And, you know, I didn't think much of it. I was leaving my house the other day and this woman was approaching. I got scared. I was like, I'm closing the door. I don't know who this lady is. And then I looked at her and I'm like, she doesn't look harmful. Let me open the door. When I opened the door, she had these two bags of organic homegrown cucumbers, tomatoes, mm -hmm. like all this harvest, all this harvest mm -hmm. energy, this mm -hmm. food. So mm -hmm. I, I'm like saying to her, well, like, who are you? And like, why are you giving this to me? And she goes, my daughter said, you always speak to her. Wow. And she felt that I should share this with you. Oh my goodness. I was a gate. My mouth, mm. I literally like started crying because mm. one, I wanted to reject it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But two, spirit worked on me and was like, hold on, what's really going on here? And mm. to know that there was something coming to me. I felt like a millionaire. Yes, that that's moment. it. It was a lot of green. It was cucumbers. And, and I said to her, thank you. I said, well, why are you giving this to me? She says, we have more than enough. We want to share. The overflow. Look at the, at the universe. She said, wow. in her, out her mouth, she said, we have more than enough. And we just wanted to share. Mm, what a gift. Wow. I went on my live and I showed everybody and I told the story and people were coming in and I was just like, you never know. Wow. You, we have to pay attention to these fine moments mm. when the messages and the lessons are coming in and they're trying Absolutely. to, you know, and that was telling me that I, there's an overflow. Yeah. 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 Let people's cup of love, cup of abundance, let allow yourself to be showered by that. You know, allow yourself to be showered by that. Receive that. Wow. I know that was a major moment of gratitude. Like I see you spirit. That was Friday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. I definitely was like, what? And then she said, you know, my daughter says you always talk. I said, well, I'm vegan. Did you know that I was vegan? She goes, no, I don't know anything. I just wanted to, <laughs> wow. I said, I'm about to go juice these things right now. <laughs> and gave you exactly what you needed. Wow. Literally exactly what I needed. That's trust. That's Isn't the that level trust? of trust. Oh my goodness. Come on now. <laughs> That's how we're supposed to be moving in our lives, just knowing. But in the conversation of what we've been talking about, when I was hung up on trying to get my mom to see me, get my mom to love me, fix her, I, I didn't have these experiences. Mm -hmm. This is not how life was showing up for me. Wow. I, I, I had to clear and make space and release. You mm -hmm. can't receive and hold on at the same time. Right, right. Right. Wow. And and then even when you bring that up, like somebody's mother, somebody's Hello. mother. I didn't even think gifted about that. You with that. Somebody's yeah. mother gifted you with that. So you're still receiving that motherly love, I that motherly it so nurturing. Much. It's always there. Yeah. It's always yeah. there. It's, it's okay. always there. It's yeah. always there. So what, what blocks people from being able to see that? denial and being well, well we have this thing that happens taking it to psychology mm -hmm. where we um we like to hold on to narratives mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. confirm what we believe to be true so if yes. we believe like for ever and ever and ever all my life for most of my adult life i thought i was a victim so okay. i needed to create and sabotage scenarios that will confirm that narrative whether i did it consciously or not Mm. So I couldn't at attract. This is so good. I, it was impossible. How the hell was mm. I going to attract that stuff if in my core, I believed I was a victim? Yes. And I was just waiting around for the next situation to victimize to me. To victimize so say, you. See, 
I, I could tell I you. I told you. This always yeah. happens to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I attachments say so are like, identities. Yeah. Yep. Attachments. We were talking exactly. about this. We were talking about this on, on Clubhouse, Keisha. I had an attachment, an identity attachment to people always judging and criticizing me. Oh, child, I did too. Big one. <laughs> we <laughs> Big had several one. of them. We had several of them. Yes. Yeah, that so was I used to be one. afraid. Like I wouldn't show up fully in social media. I still don't. Like y'all think I show up. I really don't. Like there's so much more, you know, like I really, but I definitely would be like, oh, you're not going to like it. You mm. Like this belief. But I, my mother would like, my brother jokes about it. But my mother, like her name, she called me a bitch all the time. Wow. That was her name, like casually. Mm. She would be like, she would be like talking to someone and she'd be like, this little bitch that I have in here or she like, that was like a regular thing. Like, wow. how do you come from that to feeling confident and not thinking people going to talk about you? Like you got to right. give yourself the grace. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You know, a part of my thing was, and I'm sure this will resonate with you, but a part of mine was um, specifically, and this goes for my mother and my father, my father, whenever I would do something good, Instead of him being there in the present moment, he's going to blast it. Oh, look what Desiree did. Oh, she did so good. And I'm like, daddy, you wasn't even there to really be there and support me in the moment when I needed you there. But the accolades and all of that stuff, you're supporting that. Yeah. My mother, my mother on the other, on the other hand, made it kind of bittersweet because I would do something good. And it's like, oh yeah, I taught her that. Of course. Yeah. And so it's like, damn, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I want to show up as big and as bold and as brilliant as I know I can because like somebody's going to take credit. Yeah, yeah. somebody's so, going to take ownership for it. Mm -hmm. In my program and in, in my class that I do, Healing the Inner Child and the Mother Wound, we, you know, I teach about b developing the accomplishment-oriented lifestyle. Mm. And that's basically what happens to us. You know, we either lean into it more and try, but what happens is it's never enough. It's mm. like you always think there's something else you need to do to top the other thing that you did. Right. Or you retreat and shut down and don't show up fully. Mm. So yeah. for me, I would vacillate between the two yeah, in my life too. because I'm a performing artist. My background is even though I wasn't a public speaker kind of person, I've always been on the stage dancing. I've been, mm. a, I've been I've danced with Miami Heat. I've been like all over the stage, all over. Wow. You know, I've been a performing artist my entire life since like age 10 till 2019, 2020 when the pandemic happened. I stopped. Yeah. And then like Art Basel here in Miami, someone hired me to do a gig. And, you know, I'll stick gig here and there, but I'll still gig here and there. But I'm not a part of a dance company anymore. I was a part of a professional so like that be on the stage lifestyle mm -hmm. or like I've been in pageants when I was younger. Again, it would be my mother tell, like telling everybody how she spent all this money. And it was always about her. Right. And so I would resent d doing all of that because I'm thinking like, OK, so she's going to get the credit anyways or she's going to mm -hmm. make it about her, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and like yourself, like my dad, he did the same thing. But like I was I felt like the apple of his eye. Ah. So I would like try to do more so I could get more of his praise. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, I, I would always go through this yeah. battle, but yeah. this accomplishment oriented lifestyle. And so when I entered from my darkness to my light in 2014, a big part of my healing journey was to do things and not need to be recognized. Mm -hmm. So I put, I had created my own program for myself. Like mm -hmm. I spent one year giving and not posting, telling anyone. Like, I remember I would like go to the grocery store and, and leave money for the person behind me and walk away. Like I spent a whole year of just learning to not be attached to what I do. Yeah. Wow. And that was a big deal for me. That's huge. That's, that's a part of something that I'm still working on in terms of like social media and stuff. Oh. And spirit actually gave me a download. Spiritual gave me a major spirit gave me a major download. Like two weeks ago, I was live on YouTube. And you know, a few people were watching. And spirit just was like, you don't need these glamour metrics. Spirit basically had confirmed to me that a part of why my platform has kind of been where it has been at 
is because literally I activate people, I give them what they need and they can move on with their lives. Mm. They don't have to keep coming back to me over mm. and over and over again to get mm. that little high. They're going to get the activation and the transformation and they can actually move on. So that helped me shift my perspective from feeling like, oh, only this many people engaged, only this many yeah. people did, did. And spirit was like, be at peace with that because you're yeah. doing what you're supposed to do. A lot of the times these numbers are these vanity metrics and people doing this and people are doing that. It's just that. It doesn't mean there's actually healing and transformation taking place. Listen, and I have been in those spaces. Mm. Okay. Off air, we shall talk. I have been in those spaces where it wasn't valuable. It wasn't valuable. It was just for the glamour. Yeah. It was just for that. And people, you know, that people you have people who are manipulating other people, creating a high. That's an mm. illusion. Yes. But what you're saying, sis, is that you're giving quality. That's it. Okay. That's you're it. giving quality. You're giving truth. Mm. And that is beautiful. That's going to last a lifetime for the people that you serve. Facts. Oh, I already know it. Yes. I already know yeah. it. Yeah. Let me tell you how spirit worked with me this year with that, because I was really running amok with social media, in particular Facebook. And mm. I was using it to get validation a lot mm -hmm. transparency you know yeah the people yeah. on my facebook they weren't like people i don't know these were it's like it's almost like i was trying to prove to mm -hmm. people that i knew family members and such that i'm so great yeah yeah well on january 23rd of this year i woke up i went out um to an event for um a musician from africa i can't remember his name right now but anyways I woke up. I was like, oh, I'm going to share this picture of me and Dr. Ray. The woman's name is Dr. Ray, who I was out with. And um, she's someone very significant in our community. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. let me share. I was with Dr. Ray. Mm -hmm. And I got a message that I got banned from Facebook. Mm -hmm. It said that someone reported my account, that I posted sexual things or something of that sort. And I'm against community guidelines and I can't come back on. Wow. And... In turn, because my Facebook was linked to my phone number, I got kicked off WhatsApp. Mm. And honey, I was running amok with WhatsApp too. Mm. And let me tell you something. I was like, universe, you are so funny. <laughs> yeah. I was like, You're, you said to me, Keisha, it, you better stick within. Yeah. You better go back and refocus. Yeah. You better yeah. find yourself and your work yeah. again. Yeah. You better yeah. get it right. Mm. And my Instagram didn't go, which I was surprised because Instagram is usually they're connected. connected. Yeah. You know? Well, now Instagram has this new thing where they're allowing you to run ads without a Facebook account. Mm. So it wasn't, it stayed. Right. And I was just like, okay. Mm. All right. Wow. I How you. do you guide people? How do you guide people? Or what's something that you would um let somebody know? who had these extreme or deep, let's use the word deep, deep attachment to those trauma responses, like you said, victimhood or needing validation or like me, a fear of judgment and criticism or having mm -hmm. to be in control. How do you guide people in, you know, your transformees? How do you guide them in surrendering that attachment mm -hmm. to that identity? You know, it takes several sessions to help mm -hmm. someone see that they're even attached. Uh-huh. Yeah. People generally don't want to own because we associate so much shame in owning these what would look like short shortcomings. Mm. You know? Oh, oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Let's resonate with that because yes. I don't want people to miss that. You said we have so much shame with the resonance and with the acceptance of these shortcomings. Yes, so people do. don't want to say, I need validation. They don't. So people don't want to say, I fear being criticized. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't. So I spent a lot of time in my sessions posing shadow work questions. Like, you know, when someone tells me a story that they went, um, they went to a store and they were in a line and um, the person was taking so long and they were getting uh, so upset. Okay. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just throwing something random. This is not yeah. even true. Yeah. Um, that is an opportunity for me as an inner, as a guide to explore the depths of that experience. Yeah. Yeah. And people be putting me to work, honey. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're going to work with you. they going to, because the rebuttals is going to, they will refuse to see. People oh, no. Well, to see. Um, yeah, girl, listen, yep, I have I them that. too. They like, yeah. No, that's not that. I don't think it's that. I'm I don't like, think that's what it is. Yeah, but then <laughs> but but then you tell me a story that your father forgot to pick you up from school when you were in kindergarten. Yeah. And, and you had to wait. Yeah. Now you in the line waiting and getting so mad. And that irritation is riling, is rising okay, up. Who were you really mad at? Mm. Who didn't you get to express that anger to? Oh, yes. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you got to be patient as a guide and as a coach, because I call myself a coach. I coach people into their healing. Like I don't heal you, but I definitely give you something to think about and reflect upon. But I think something that I heard that was so beautiful. Actually, I heard this from Iyanla Van Zandt and Michael Beckwith. They did an interview a while ago. Yeah. Girl, that's my guy. That's my guy. Oh, I love him. I love him. So powerful. I'm going to have me a nice little church like him one day. Me and you both. Me I, I, you we both. might have the church together. Bro, we may be together. <laughs> Listen, so many people in the community be like, girl, you give me preacher vibes. I'm oh, like, you know that. what? I don't fight that. I don't yeah, fight me that, too, okay? Me too. me too. I don't fight it. I don't fight it. If yeah. I give you preacher vibes, I'm connecting you to that inner child, yeah. you know, and, and, yeah. and empowering you and uplifting you. Yeah. But Ayanna Van Zant and Michael Beckwith in their in their bill, they had said, you know, as coaches and as guides and, you know, helping people in this way, we have to hold the vision of who they can be. We got to mm. hold that vision of who mm. they can be, who they're striving to be. Mm. We hold on to that even when they're fighting it, even That's when they're powerful. in denial. Yeah. That is powerful mm. because I, I talk about, um, you know, the creation frequency. Mm. And I talk about t- tuning in to your own perfect pitch that's going to guide you to what you're creating. Because this Keisha that you're talking to, this is not who you would have spoken to in 2014. Yeah, yeah. Right? But yeah. a lot of times we want to show up and be there already, but then yeah. we wouldn't have a progressive story. Mm. Right? Yeah. So yeah. we got to embrace every part of the story. Mm-hmm. You got to start from somewhere holding on to the vision of what you're creating. You got to hold on to the vision, hold on to the vision. And so that's a part of the coaching too and the guiding too, because people know that there's something off because maybe they're always triggered or, you know, experiencing stagnation in their lives. They know that something is off, but sometimes the, the attachment to that old reality can be so thick and so heavy that they can't see the vision. They can't see what is possible for them. And I'm I'm dealing with, you know, some work and with some clients. I have a couple of clients that I work with right now that I'm, I'm trying to get them to see what is possible. I'm trying to uh, uh, create this vision for them. And it's it's it, it to me right now. And I'm sure you probably think about this, but as coaches and guides, we also have to know who our ideal client is. Honey, I start to serve. Because if people don't want to see, baby, you it's a lot of work trying to get people to at least I, see that they can be better. I am not the one. I tell people all the time, when you if you refer me, please let the people know that they're gonna do work. Yeah. I had somebody come to me and said, Well, I thought you were just gonna tell me to journal my feelings. Oh and God. <laughs> I said, I am not that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, loving and compassionate always, but definitely not. We are going to do this work because you're spending your money. Mm -hmm. You're Mm -hmm. you're spending your money. This is an investment. Yeah. A lot of people want kind masters. Ah. Mm. A lot of people want someone who's going to hold their hand and be very nice about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're going to be nice. We're going to be very loving, but we're going to do this work. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I definitely have tapped into this this vibration of my ideal um, transform me that I'm yeah. not, I'm not you know I'm looking for someone who's ready who's ready and yeah. willing and yeah. curious very That's curious a big very open and tr- willing to trust yeah, willing to trust because it's a big to me it's like if I find myself in any space and place I'm here for a reason yes and I'm gonna be curious about what that is. 
Yes. And I'm going to, I have had clients in the past, Keisha, this has been so funny. And I'm so grateful for my growth because I've had clients where I would propose questions and offer ideas because spiritually we have a gift, right? Mm -hmm. To where we can see things mm -hmm. and we can understand things and we can speak to the unconscious mind and we see these layers. But I've had some, no, I don't think that's it. Mm -mm. Yes. No, that's not what it is. No, I don't mm. think so. I don't feel like that. No, that ain't what it is. But what you just said to me maybe five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago is validating. Yeah. It is what it is. You yeah, know what I mean? Were, so, that means they weren't ready. They weren't ready. They weren't to ready. Them, they yeah. weren't ready. They weren't yeah. ready. Yeah. 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 And so there's yeah. there you got to give grace in that because I've had times in my life where somebody probably was sowing a seed inside of me. But because that attachment to that old trauma and that identity was so thick and so deep. You can't see it. I couldn't see what the person saw in me. Ah, definitely. Yeah. I, I've been, oh, believe me, I have been there in my spiritual community. It has been like, I just resist, resist, resist. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of resistance, a lot mm -hmm. of resistance. And yeah. What do you think shifts that supports you in then answering that call when it's time? What? Repeat that for me. What do you think shifts inside of you mm. that supports you in answering the call to rise okay. up to that vision when it mm. happens? And uh, when you can only go for so long when enough is enough, when you look around and you're tired of the outcomes, yeah, when you look around and you realize it's almost like I got to do this or I'm going to stay in my suffering. Yeah. Right. Mm. So, so each level of elevation for me, has really been about, like, I'm going through one right now. Like I'm yeah. at this stage where I've I've maximized a certain potential in one area and I'm feeling a pull to even go a step further and I'm terrified, mm. like I'm afraid. But I'm also at this place where it's like, I either do this thing or, and it'll be something simple. Like for me, my membership community that I'm creating, mm. like I'm terrified, mm -hmm. I'm being honest. But for me, it's like, that's going to take you closer to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. So what is yeah. the issue? What's going on mm. here? Mm. This is how we talk. I'm not going to talk mm. to you nasty because I love mm. you. But mm. what are we waiting for? We can't really wait any longer. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so I just do, I do it with, I do it without having all that I think I need. Yes. To make the mistakes. Yes. And I just do it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, being open to learn and being being open to have the experience, but I also think that's the importance of community because yeah. um Phila, you know Phila, um love her. love her. You know, she has a membership and you know a top tier membership. And I was receiving a message from Spirit like, okay, how about you be of service to her so that you can yeah. develop that confidence? So I reached out to Phyla and I tell people this what? because people need to understand humility and growth and learning. I reached out to Phyla. This was like two years ago. I'm like, Phyla, Spirit is telling me to offer myself to you to be of some sort of service. I don't know how, but I just know I need to be in your space. I need to be around you. I need to learn something from you. Mm. And she, of course, spiritually at that time, needing that support, she opens the door and she says, OK, I want you to be kind of like my assistant. I want you to support me in my community, in my membership, in my sessions. I say I'm being there. And so for about four months or so, I'm showing up to the sessions. I'm being present. I'm doing whatever it is that she needs me to do. But do you know, a few months later, I had the confidence, the power, and the wherewithal to start my community. And now this is my second year starting my community, having my community, and, be, and rocking the house. Well, like I might have to reach say, out to you. <laughs> yeah, I would love, listen, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. I would, I would love for you to come into the space, but I would love uh, witness what it means, okay, to be vulnerable. If you're watching yes. this in the yes. middle of the, the whole podcast, yes. I'm like, okay, I need to, I'm glad I mentioned this. I welcome you into the space. We meet every other Monday. Whenever you just want to stop in, come on. You want to know why? Because not only are you going to receive whatever you need to receive, but you're going to give something beautiful to the yes, space. I am open. Because okay, I, we set that I, up. I have my community already. It's just, I just don't have, like, I do my, my sessions and I have my class, my program, mm -hmm. but I don't have, like, a set 
community, but I already set it up. I set it up. So we will talk about the kinks. Yeah. So I kind of have everything set up on the back end. I just have yeah. it hit the activation button. Yeah. Okay. I have it hit, hit the, the activation, activation button. I have it hit the activation <laughs> button. So I would love to come in though. And so yeah. that's what's going to be birthed from this podcast. Okay. I'm going to oh, be coming listen. in. I, listen. I'll, I would love to and and really absolutely um, beautiful. So that's that's a follow up. Absolutely beautiful. That's what this Thank thing you. is supposed to be. Thank Listen, you. Keisha, we are coming to the end of our um, show today, but I still have so much that I want to talk to you about. So there's going to have to be a part two there because be. we kind of, we didn't necessarily speak exactly to inner child healing, but everything has been inner child healing. It has been. It really has. Everything has been inner child healing. Mm -hmm. If you could tell this community one thing about healing the inner child that they could at least sit with and chew on for a little bit, what would that be? I want to say, you know, no matter how much work we've done in our lives, no matter how grown up we believe we are, no matter how dressed up and suited up we are, there's always a part of ourselves that might be unresolved in pain, wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard, wanting to be loved. And it is imperative that you get into that part of yourself. So I ask the question in all my work and everywhere that I go and all my public speaking engagements, how old were you when you needed the most love in your childhood? Mm. How old were you when you needed the most, the most love? Wow. And for most people, the age that initially comes to mind is the exact age and you know exactly what happened. Mm. So it's important that you connect with that time of your life and yeah. look in your adult life and see all the ways that you've dragged that part of yourself into mm -hmm. your adult life. Mm -hmm. And try to find out what it was that you needed then that you didn't get mm -hmm. and explore which, how you can give that back to yourself. This yeah. is what we call reparenting. Yeah. Okay. Don't ignore it. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, we deserve to we literally deserve to be the fullness of who we were meant to be and to call back those qualities about ourselves. Yes, you know, yes. when you ask that question, I thought about and this is so amazing because I see how I've changed. But in my life, I as a kid, I was always the outspoken kid. Mm. I always had something to say. And what I had to say, it was powerful. It meant something. It even made the adults be like, oh, what What did that child just say? You know what I mean? It was always that. And in some areas of my life, of course, I still show up in that way like this. Um, but in other areas, I found myself being like, you know what? I ain't going to say nothing, you know, because of, you know, things like stay in a child's place or because like when I was a teenager, Keisha, I was a teenager and I could see and feel spirits in the room. Like when us as teens, we having a little party or something and you got teenagers drinking and smoking and doing all of these things. And I could see spirit moving around. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the time that I could express these things. Like y'all didn't just see that. Y'all didn't just hear that. Are y'all not seeing what I've seen? They weren't seeing it, sis. Mm -hmm. I vividly remember an experience where we were at like a party with my homegirls and I said some stuff and this guy was like, don't nobody want to hear all of that. Be quiet. Nobody want to hear all of that. If you're going to be talking all that crazy stuff, like you could leave, like literally stuff like that. Whoa. So that outspokenness and that, that ability to communicate with spirit and see spirit at play in so many different spaces. I remember a point in time of shutting that down mm. out of not wanting to make people uncomfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. Right. Out of not wanting to be like the weirdo outcast person. You know what I mean? So when we're that resonates with me. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're talking about calling back the fullness of who we are, that's also a part of it, right? Because that's a part of myself that at one point in time I said, you know what, I'm gonna cut myself off from that. Or I'm going to turn that aspect off in my being because it makes people uncomfortable. It makes me look weird. It's mm -hmm. all a form of protection. Mm -hmm. But once we get to a certain point in our lives, it becomes false protection. We no longer need that barrier. Very much false. Very mm -hmm. false. It's it's a it's a it's an we want to protect um, because we think there's something to be protected. Mm, talk about it. 
if you're safe, then you don't need to be protected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's why choosing the company that we keep is very, 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 wow. it's, a, it's imperative because I'm the same way. Like I have visions I see, but I, I have them in my dream state, but I mm -hmm. like, I told you, did I tell you I had a dream about you? Yeah, you did. I had a dream that I came to New York and met with you and your family yeah. before the baby was born and you had a baby in your hand. Wow. I had that dream plain as day. I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I see things, you know, and yeah. that was before this podcast, anything, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? And, you know, that's hard to be somebody like, or like, if I get close enough to you and you have a deceased loved one, then I'll just go and have a dream about that person with a message for you. Yeah. You yeah. know, like they'll come to me and tell me that I got to tell you this. And I'm like, how mm -hmm. do you tell them this? Yes. I have lost so many people that I thought were my friends mm -hmm. from being in that position. Yeah. You know, I remember there was a woman that I met in community and we were both like working on this whole being public speaker thingy. And, you know, I didn't know anything about her brother. I didn't know his name either. And I go and I have a dream about her brother. And I told her about the dream and she was like, yeah, that was his the name in Spanish in my dream was his real name in English. Mm. Like his name was Pablo and in real life, his name is Paul, mm. right? And I told her, Chala, I never heard back from that lady. Wow. <laughs> it be, that and has brother, happened to me the too. The brother died, the brother, the brother mm. committed suicide in mm. real life, he died by suicide. Mm. So it was intense, like his significance, so I get it. But I, it's like, yeah. I, I just learned that I ain't for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like we were talking about the people we serve, mm. you know, we're not for everyone. Yeah. And the right people will come into our lives. Yep. And that goes back to that trust. That goes back to that trust and that knowing and being open to receive those people and knowing that we're worthy enough. So, yeah. baby, uh, um, another great, this is so obvious. I'm like, spirit, okay. I know. Do we keep going? Do we stop? I don't know. <laughs> I so much. Now. Gotta but stop. <laughs> here's one more thing that that has to do with that. Like when it comes down to my community, I raised the price, right? Yes, the last mm -hmm. year's price was not this year's price. Not the same. It's not the same, right? Because yeah. I've been building. I got my feet wet. I know what I'm doing now. Yeah. One of my members messaged me this morning. She said, and she was a part of it last year as well. She was like, I just want to tell you that the energy in the sacred sister circle has just up leveled. She was like, it feels so beautiful, so pure, so easy, so light. And I'm so proud of you. Mm. And I was like, she sent me that at six o'clock in the morning. Oh. And I was just like, thank you so much for that, sis. But what is it? What it's a testament to is that when we charge our worth, when we show mm -hmm. up in that, we actually receive people who are really on that same vibration and who can hold and share and engage in that space. And we get to serve people who are our ideal client, which supports the healing and the transformation. Yes. I've, I've felt that I have gone through that. I have experienced that. And I, I changed my price, you know, mm -hmm. in, in my program. And, and I thought at first it was terrifying. It was like, oh my God, nobody's going to, but the people who are ready, they're, they, they're coming. They come. They're coming. They come. They keep on just flowing in. Your door is open. Your door is open. You say ready for business, ready to do the work, ready to heal. Listen, Keisha, last question. I asked everybody this question. Oh, yeah. it, it brings in the fun, right? It brings in the fun, even though it's been fun the entire time. What is a song? that you like to listen to that connects you to that fun, healed, happy, youthful, inner child you? Oh my God. Okay. I have an alter ego. Okay. She's a dance hall queen. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that. She has a name and everything. Her name is mm. Keisha Gudas. Okay. <laughs> All right. And like I told one of my clients the other day, she's like, I need an affirmation that, you know, I could walk away with. And I said to her, the affirmation is, um, and then I told her like in this raunchy patois, mm -hmm. you know, language, and I, that's mm -hmm. like my alter ego self, mm -hmm. like, you know? So the music, I don't really have a song, but my dance hall playlist. Oh my goodness. You can forget it. Oh, that's it. it. 
Listen to me. I, <laughs> I love that family. We gotta listen to some dance hall and dance and groove. Yes, you it has to be, so free. Yeah, it has to be like Vibes Cartel or Sprague mm. Benz or Okay, you give us man. Yeah, you gotta go on and just the 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 most raunchiest wine that you can okay. do. Okay, and you gotta add some hands in it and do and then just Girl, really, really feel yourself, feel every part of your body. You know, I do this dance class on the beach once a month here in South Florida on mm. Hollywood Beach. And, you know, the women think they're coming to like learn dance moves. But I tell everyone all the time, a big part, the body keeps the score. So mm. we we have so much trapped in our bodies. We really need to visualize whatever the pain is and create a, a place through the body that you want it to come out from. For me, right. it's always the soles of my feet and the palms of my hands. Ooh. Yes. Wow. First of all, Keisha, I'm so glad that you said that because I wanted to talk about the movements for change. Movement yes. for change. That's it. Wow. So I visualize and being a Reiki practitioner, I, you know, the palms of my hand and the soles of my feet, those are two really powerful chakras that nobody talks about. The mm. star seat chakra, the soles of your feet. Mm. Everything goes through there and comes all the way to your head. You mm. know, in Jamaica, when you have a flu and the temperature, they put garlic at the bottom of your feet with your socks mm. on because mm. the garlic pulls out the flu. Mm. literally so mm. the soles of your feet is like the most powerful place absolutely on body, right absolutely. and so i tell people all the time move visualize whatever that pain is if it's grief find a place that you wanted to move out of and just move your body and watch watch that thing coming out take notes family that's it right there like literally when we get off of here because as a ritual i literally if i go and i listen to the songs that my that my sacred sister special guest give us i go listen to it girl right when we get off of here i'm about to go on youtube play dance hall and i'm about to just give me some little groove in, in. Yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna get yeah. all of that in because we yeah. deserve that we deserve yes, we that do. movement for change yes we for do for healing for yes, growth we do. yes I'm keisha sure. tell the family how can they reach you how can they see you how can they work with you because i know a lot of people could definitely use your divine guidance oh thank you all right so there goes my link right there my movements for change.com mm. i'm everywhere on every platform except for facebook y'all somebody mm. <laughs> I'm not, uh, movements for change i have a youtube that you know i gotta hit that activation button but there's content there so go and check it out. Instagram, YouTube, um, TikTok, Movements okay. for Change, mm -hmm. and MyMovementsForChange.com. You can book. I have a consult, a sacred consultation. That's a 15-minute phone call. That's mm -hmm. complimentary. It's me. It's you. It's We're talking about what you're ready to heal and how I can help you. Mm -hmm. And um, I got an inner child sacred circle coming up. Wow. Okay, because that's what that's what I'm talking about. My membership. So I'm holding myself accountable. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Look, I'm on your website right now. I'm putting myself in. I'm about to sign up to the email list myself because Hello. I like to see, I like to know what's going Thank on. You. I want to be a part of it and, and be able to support your sacred work. Y'all, I love this for us. I love this for y'all. Thank y'all so much so much for listening and for watching the sacred sister circle podcast this is episode five inner child healing with keisha bowers i appreciate you so much sis i love you you, I love you, you. are a soul sister to me for real for real okay peace everybody peace,